Now that ANSYS has the mathematical model, let me give you some tips on how to get ANSYS to solve that mathematical model and, and calculate the variation of the temperature with respect to time. In unsteady problems, um, the numerical solution uh, is carried out by marching in time. So you advance the solution time step by time step, which means that an additional input that we need to give answers is the time step. Let me explain a little bit more by going to my slide. In the steady case, we saw that the, the right-hand side can be discretized using the element-by-element element interpolation of temperatures to get a set of algebraic equations relating neighboring nodal values. That's still done, but now you also need a discretization in, in time. And um, the way that's done is to, so if I have this term here, the time derivative, I would say that's, and I want this at some node i, I would say that's the time, you know, that's the temperature at node i at some time level n plus 1 minus um, the value of the, uh, the temperature at that node at the previous time level divided by delta t. So you need, you know, you're advancing from time level n to time level n plus 1, and you start off the marching at the initial time where you know all these uh, temperatures and in our case it's all set to one and when you do this you're introducing a discretization error a time discretization error and analogous to mesh refinement you can decrease that error by by refining the time step that is making delta t um, smaller and smaller so we need to enter delta t in ANSYS and I'll show you where to do that if you go to analysis settings okay you see there's an auto time stepping. So answers will actually, you know, uh, will pick the time step uh, automatically. Let's turn that off um, and set a, a constant time step of 0.01. And it will march the solution until the step end time. So this is, you can ignore these, these two entries and just focus on that. And I just wanted to do one time step. So I'll say step end time of 0.01. And then I can solve. So it now has the nodal temperature value. So if I go to, uh, you know, all these nodes, it has advanced the the temperature values there to by one time step, and it has the value at time um, at time t equal to 0 0.01. And if I deselect the nodes and then uh, highlight solution and get temperature, and so what I'm trying to do is get the temperature distribution, I see how in the effect of the convection boundary condition, how this has become cooler. Um, and I can also look at um, the, the temperature variation with time. And let's say I want to get it at the symmetry plane. Uh, in fact, the the homework problem asks you that. And since there's no temperature variation in this direction, I can get it at any point. Let me pick, uh, if I highlight solution and select vertex, let me pick this point here. And then I'll say probe temperature, and then I can say evaluate all results. And so you can see after one time step, that temperature has changed from 1 to 0.99997. Um, and and by the way, when you when you're looking at the temperature distribution by default, it's giving you the the last time, but you can go and give it you know intermediate times and so on. Um, so let me go back to analysis settings and let's say now you know I want to I want it to march until t equal to three, which is the end time we are given in the in the problem statement, and then I can say solve. And if I look at the temperature, by the way, your um, your temperature values will be different because I'm doing a different BO number um, just to make things interesting. And you can see at the BO number that I'm doing it at, you know, the temperature has fallen a lot. Um, and this is at the last time, and I can look at intermediate times. And if I go to the the temperature probe, and 
expand this a little bit, you can see it has uh, 300 time steps. And um, it has fallen, so the temperature at that po point has fallen to of the order of 7, 10 to the power of minus 3. Um, this is non-dimensional terms. And you need that variation um, to uh, in, in, in the problem statement uh, to, to generate the figure that it's asked, asked for. So I can select all. Um, I can say select all, right click, and then say copy. Um, I think copy cell. And then I can open up Notepad and copy this, Control V, copy this into Notepad, and then save this. Um, as a text file so I'll say save and I can go to the appropriate folder and I'll call it um, answers1.txt and I have written a little MATLAB script which I'll share with you that will take that answer solution and compare it to the one term series solution so um, this is a MATLAB script, and this is not the right series solution. So if you want to use a MATLAB script, you'll have to replace that with the right one-term series solution. And, um, and then it'll plot the series solution, and then it'll read in the data from that text file that I just created and, and, and plot that. And, and the plot will look something like this. So these, these, these values are not right. Um, but you should see exponential decay, and that's the answers result for a delta t of, of 0.01. So if you replace the right um, series solution here, and if, and if you replace the right, you know, answers one dot text, you will get um, you, you should see a better match between the two curves. And then um, the problem also asks you to redo the answer solution on the default delta t. So you can do that and generate a second text file called answers2.txt, and, and you can uncomment these, and you'll actually get the third curve too. And the way you get the default time step is to go back to analysis settings and um, order time stepping, I'll say program controlled. Okay, and then if I say solve, you should see that, in fact, there are a lot fewer time points because one answer senses that the solution is not changing very much. It takes very large time steps. So you can see the, um, the effect of that. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind is that under solution, actually, let's see, it's under, is it under solution information? Um, I have to look around. Maybe it's under analysis settings and uh, analysis, data management, um, you have to kind of dig around. Okay, this is what I was looking for. By default, it's going to store results at all time points, which means that if you have a lot of time steps, you know, you're going to generate a lot of data, and instead of that, you can ask it to, um, you know, to, to store points, uh, to store the data at equally spaced points or something like that. In this problem, that's not an issue, but I've, you know, I've tripped up on that and uh, you might too, so I thought I'll mention it. Um, so have fun with this uh, unsteady conduction problem in ANSYS.